And uh, it looks like, you know, the thing that we were promised with streaming services, which is no more cable bundles, it appears that we're sort of closing the loop on that and that, you know, streaming is sort of reverting to cable as we all have sort of feared that it would. Um, but, you know, fear not, this still, this bundle would still be made available at a discount. The question is, what exactly would that discount be? Disney and Warner Brothers are bundling their streaming services, and it looks like Netflix is making a deal with the NFL. All of this and more in this week's edition of the Shall I Stream It podcast. What's going on, everybody? Larry Freed here, back as your guest host for another episode of the podcast. Thanks again to Matt for having me back. I'm excited to dive into all of these really interesting stories and talk about all of the latest developments in the world of streaming. But before we get started, just a reminder that the Shall I Stream It podcast is available in both audio and video formats. So if you prefer watching a video podcast, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also comment and tell us what you think about the stories. Uh, or if you prefer listening in an audio format while you're in the car or while you're doing laundry or any task like that, you can always listen to us on Spotify or Apple or Google or whichever is your preferred audio podcasting platform. If you're watching us on YouTube, again, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you are listening to us on Spotify or Apple, be sure to follow the show. Maybe leave a review if you got something nice to say about it. Uh, but enough about that. Let's dive into this week's stories. Okay, so our top story this week is the news that Disney and Warner Brothers Discovery are bundling their services together in something reminiscent of a traditional cable package. Uh, we're going to have Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max available for a bundle that's going to drop uh, sometime this summer. No date's been announced yet, and no formal price has been announced yet, but sources from CNBC do say that it will be at a discount, which will break down momentarily. Uh, now, ESPN Plus will not be available in this bundle for reasons that we will get to later, but what will be available in this bundle is everything under the Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max you know, banner. This includes ABC, CNN, Discovery, Food Network, FX, HBO, HGTV. Plus, of course, you have, you know, Marvel and DC and Pixar and Star Wars and all of these, you know, larger uh, popular IPs. And of course, all of the popular shows that are available on Hulu, including, of course, the Bear, and several other popular shows like that. Uh, the way this works from a business perspective is that Disney is going to sort of act as the distributor. They'll deal with the sales of the subscription services and the, and the bundle and all that stuff. And then they will take a percentage of all the income that comes from that and they'll give it to Warner Brothers Discovery, which sort of makes sense because Disney is sort of two thirds of the you know, threesome pie here. So it makes sense that they would sort of be the one to spearhead this deal. According to Disney, this uh, bundle would be made available on either of the three platforms' websites. There will be ad-supported plans. There will be ad-free plans. And uh, it looks like, you know, the thing that we were promised with streaming services, which is no more cable bundles, it appears that we're sort of closing the loop on that and that, you know, streaming is sort of reverting to cable as we all have sort of feared that it would. Um, but, you know, fear not, this still, this bundle would still be made available at a discount. The question is, what exactly would that discount be? And as a reminder, I want to do a quick breakdown of all of the different prices at play of the services separately and what a proper price might look like for this bundle. So for Max, you would be paying $9.99 for ads, $15.99 for no ads. And for Disney Plus, you'd be paying $7.99 for ads and $13.99 for no ads. For Hulu, you'd be paying $7.99 for ads and $17.99 for no ads. And then if you had Disney Plus and Hulu together, which is a recent integration that they've been doing um, and you know advertising, uh, you'd be paying $9.99 for ads and then $19.99 without ads. So in total... If you were to be if you were to be paying for all three of these services, you would ideally want to pay less than twenty dollars or nineteen ninety nine with ads and uh, thirty six dollars or thirty five ninety nine without ads. So as long as the numbers sort of fall underneath those totals, we we are looking at a discount, you know, between the services, which you know is beneficial. It's nice to get all of these services at a discount. You know, it just makes login infos and billing infos and all this 
stuff, you know, even more confusing. But you know what? This was inevitable. Now, I previously mentioned that ESPN is not going to be included in this bundle, and that is because ESPN is actually going to be getting its own separate app that's going to launch in 2025. And of course, as we've covered previously on the show, Disney, Fox, and WBD are also joining forces for a sort of sports streaming service bundle, uh, which is going to get its own separate app, which is also launching in 2025. Um, However, we've also recently been informed by Disney CEO Bob Iger on their recent earnings call that ESPN is going to start being integrated into Disney Plus similarly to how Hulu has been integrated uh, with its own you know, sort of tab and hub within the streaming service. Now, for those who have been paying attention and maybe you've uh, listened to previous episodes of the Shall I Stream It podcast where we've talked about the Disney Plus and Hulu integration, um, but Disney Plus and Hulu have sort of been more closely integrated, meaning that uh, on Disney Plus, for those who have the Hulu subscription, they'll be able to access Hulu programming on Disney Plus. They can also access Hulu Um, you know, via its own separate site. Uh, And it looks like Disney is going to do a separate thing for ESPN, where there will be its own hub on the Disney Plus service. However, you can also access ESPN Plus as its own separate service. Now, it's a question of whether or not Disney is going to allow ESPN to be available for all Disney Plus subscribers without the ESPN Plus service or not. It's unclear. Uh, Based on the earnings call, Bob Iger says that, you know, ESPN being on Disney Plus will be made available to, quote, all U.S. customers. However, he didn't make it clear whether or not this means that they wouldn't need ESPN Plus as a service or they would. My assumption would be that they would need it in the same way that you would need Hulu to access Hulu content on Disney Plus. Um, It's unclear as of now. Um, I would also add that the ESPN Plus app that's happening separately uh, we'll have a whole slew of additional features and things that sports fans would really want especially so perhaps that would mean that you know ESPN basic content available for all Disney plus subscribers ESPN plus extra features and stuff gotta pay extra again it's unclear how the pricing is gonna break down on all of this but what we do know is that ESPN will get a tab on Disney plus similar to Hulu and the ESPN plus unique app, as well as the Disney merger sports app, those two will be separate things as well. Uh, It's a little confusing, (laughs) sort of the the state of the sports streaming industry right now, but hopefully we'll all be able to make sense of it once all of these things launch in 2025. Uh, Some interesting other things that came out of that earnings call is that uh, two specific things I want to point out. One is that Disney Plus and Hulu are now profitable, apparently, um, which is surprising. Disney's second quarter showed some significant loss in their streaming uh, services, um, but apparently they are on the upswing and they are now showing uh, profit uh, for both Disney Plus and Hulu, which is promising. According to Iger, uh, their integrations of Disney Plus and Hulu have shown encouraging results, which is likely why they're doing it with ESPN as well. Uh, Another interesting data point from that earnings call is that Disney is going to start cracking down on password sharing. Um, Specifically, they will be launching a sort of global crackdown in September. So if you are password sharing on Disney Plus, uh, be prepared for a reckoning. Staying on the topic of live sports, let's talk a little bit about Netflix. It appears that they have heard about all the shakeups in the sports streaming world, and they are looking to uh, seriously place a stake in the game. Because according to Puck News, who have uh, you know been speaking with anonymous sources, Netflix is currently in, quote, high stakes talks to secure two NFL games uh, for Christmas Day 2024. I'm assuming this means exclusive streaming rights, Uh, But it's not entirely clear how this deal would go down. Nothing has been officially signed. Netflix and uh, the NFL are still sort of jumping through the legal hurdles of what this means. But what it specifically means in in the bigger picture is that this is Netflix's first major play into big league sports. Now, this news is kind of interesting because according to various Netflix execs, including Ted Sarandos, Netflix is not really interested in live sports or really being a player in that industry, but several deals that they've made recently would suggest otherwise. Um, Those who are in the know 
will remember that they, you know, struck a historic deal with the WWE. They have be- they will as of January 2025 become the sole source for WWE live Monday Night Raw, which is, you know, the first time that the WWE programming would be made available through a non-linear cable network. So that's really huge. They also say that they're going to host a, a boxing match with Jake Paul and Mike Tyson in July of 2024. As stupid as that sounds, that deal is going to prove to be very lucrative. They've also, you know, held Netflix branded tennis and golf tournaments. So it's clear that Netflix has an interest in live sports. And it would appear that this deal with the NFL is only further solidifying their place in the industry. Again, nothing is official. It's hard to say exactly what this deal um is specifically for, is this exclusive streaming rights? Is this exclusive everything rights? That wouldn't make a lot of sense because of the traditional NFL linear cable network. Again, it's and it's unclear like what the two NFL games are uh, for for Christmas Day that they would be getting. Um, But all that we know is that they are close to signing a deal and that this, uh, you know, brings Netflix into the game. So welcome to the game, Netflix. You better be on the ball. Our last story of the day is probably the most uplifting of the five, uh, and it's also the most exciting of the five. And ironically, it comes from the service with the smallest amount of clout out of the five, and that is, of course, Tubi. We love Tubi here at Shall I Stream It, uh, the little engine that could. Uh, For those who don't know, Tubi is an ad-supported streaming service and the most popular ad-supported streaming service of any in the United States. Uh, We've covered them in the past on the podcast, uh, specifically when I was here last time, we spoke about uh, the redesigning of their logo and the UI on their streaming app. Uh, And now it appears that they are continuing to galvanize their young Gen Z audience um, by turning their Tubi original production process into a series of crowdfunding campaigns. Let's talk about what this means. Um, This initiative is called Stubios. It sounds like a brand of breakfast cereal, but it is actually just a play on the word studios with, of course, the word Tubi in it. Uh, I sort of gawk at the name, but I'm actually incredibly excited about the initiative itself. Basically, what it means is that creators are going to be able to apply for this special program in which Tubi will give them the resources to produce their own independent feature film or a television series based on demand from to be users, based on excitement from them. Uh, creators uh, are now able to apply for this. And what it would mean is that they would become, quote, studio runners. Uh, again, a play on studio runners. Um, and they would be able to sort of promote their project on the studio's app. And should the project get enough support on the app, what they're calling a viewership threshold, the project gets greenlit and Tubi provides them resources to actually produce the feature. Now, what this viewership threshold is, is not clear. According to a video advertisement about Stubios, there appears to be a follow button uh, for projects featured on the app. So I guess a certain follower count might amount for when a project gets uh, gets greenlit, excuse me. Um Maybe it's a viewership count on one of the videos that's posted on the app to promote the project. Not entirely sure. What I am sure about is that if a project does get greenlit, fans can follow the project. They can vote on polls that creators post. They can get early access to behind-the-scenes content. And eventually, they'd be able to watch the you know fully produced film on Tubi. It would be distributed there. They would also promote it. This is an incredibly exciting initiative. You know, this is a way for a fully independently produced feature to sort of break through the common studio hurdles, the sort of IP awareness uh, slog that we're dealing with right now from major studios. And uh, they can uh, have a platform to sort of have their, you know, unique idea that's maybe outside of, you know, common awareness or outside of basic IP get funded by a streaming service uh, that believes in them. It's a really exciting initiative. Uh, Tubi is maybe the last place I expected it to come from, but you know, I really shouldn't be surprised. You know, Tubi has sort of been slowly galvanizing an audience for their original sort of low budget programming. They are again, sort of being presented as um, a counter product to something like a Netflix or a Disney, which is so reliant on their sort of established IP or uh, their sort of common films or rotating slate of films and television shows. Um, Tubi provides an alternate version of that, a much wider selection, uh, again, for 
a cost as it is ad supported, but it's clearly not enough uh, to deter people because uh, they've been seeing really strong viewership counts. Again, as I've mentioned uh, in previous episodes. Um, some other interesting details about this initiative, again, called Stubios. Um, Issa Rae, who most of you will probably know as uh, you know the creator and star of Insecure. She's also been featured in a number of films, including Barbie most recently and The Lovebirds with Kumail Nanjiani. Uh, her and the company she co-founded, Color Creative, are serving as mentors for all of the creators uh, who you know are accepted into the Studios program. They'll do one-on-one mentorship calls and you know other services, which is really exciting. You know, Issa Rae has been a very outspoken proponent of diversity and entertainment. She's a perfect partner for a program like this, which seeks to sort of you know give underseen, underrepresented creators a boost. Uh, that's a really exciting element of this project. Another interesting detail is that studio runners do not need to have filmmaking experience. They can, you know, be from any sort of artistic practice or background. They're looking for a wide array of different artists. You know, you can see this clearly from the first studio runner that they've announced for studios, Lady London, who is a viral rap star. She's producing a docu-series on the creation of her first album. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, Lady London does not have filmmaking experience, but you know she is still being launched into studios, and so I think this is a really good example of the kind of creators that studios is looking for. Um, you know, you don't have to be just a straight up filmmaker; you can just be somebody who's looking to make a film or television project happen. And if your project's good enough, fans will see it; they'll support it. Uh, that is uh, a very interesting element to the project. According to Tubi, they're going to announce two more creators who are also helping to launch the project. Uh, those will be announced later this month. The last detail I want to bring up is that studio runners who get their project greenlit and produced will receive an executive producer credit, and they're going to be paid a flat fee for the IP, which likely means that Tubi will have the freedom you know, to take their idea and continue producing films, sequels, or, you know, heaven forbid, remakes or reboots of uh, this original idea, you know, in the years to come. That's a very interesting element of this. You know, it's clear that Tubi is looking to sort of garner their own lineup of IP, just not sort of you know, mega brand awareness IP like Marvel or Disney. They're sort of creating their own original stories that they can sell as IP with sequels and stuff moving forward. Uh, I assume this executive producer credit would come alongside a credit like director or writer or, you know, how whatever the studio runner would initially be credited as. Um, I think this is just, you know, a way for them to, to say that we are paying our artists appropriately which I really hope they, you know, commit to because, you know, the cynical part of me thinks that they say that and they don't pay them properly or they don't pay them enough. Hopefully that doesn't happen to be. Don't let me down, please. Applications will be accepted until May 31st or until they hit 750 applications. For all I know, they may have already hit that number already, but if they haven't and you're interested, you can apply to this program until May 31st, and winners uh, will be informed in the fall. To be expects to launch all of the projects that are selected, which I believe they're selecting 20 projects from the 750 applications. Um, all of the 20 projects that get invitations for Studios will launch their promotions on the app before the end of 2024. So this is a really exciting project. Uh, this is a really smart project in the sense that it fits with Tubi's new sort of brand identity where they're trying to really let younger audiences who are looking for new content on streaming services outside of the slog have their voices be heard. Uh, I'm super interested to see what originals come out of this project. I'm hoping that while you know creators like Lady London are cool to include, I really want to see some unknown, complete newbie to the entertainment industry get their first feature, you know, produced by Tubi and be available on a streaming service that is, you know, ad supported. Um, it's just, you know, really exciting to see something like this happen. And I'm happy that Tubi um, is giving, uh, you know, creators the opportunity to have their voices heard and to have their projects be made. You know, the studio system is really slogged down by IP and brand awareness and all this stuff. They don't give original ideas a shot. At least the majority of studios don't. So if Tubi has to be the one to fight against this, then you know what? 
let them. If you go to patreon.com slash shall I supporters, you can help us make this show happen. You can help us make everything across the shall I, you know, series of videos happen. Shall I stream it? Shall I see it? Uh, your support is incredibly valuable to us. Uh, it helps us make this show possible. And uh, of course you get really cool benefits. If you sign up through Patreon, we have two tiers. We have the shall I supporter tier at $1 a month. And then we have the super supporter tier at $5 a month uh, for the $1 a month tier. You get to join in on group chats with Matt and the other people. Patreon members, uh, you get special supporter only posts, you get your name on the thank you screen of one of our YouTube videos, and you can also vote on future video topics. And if you join the $5 a month tier, you get exclusive videos from Matt. What do those videos include? You'll have to join the tier to find out. Join us on Patreon if you want those benefits, but of course, even just your viewership to the end of this episode is immensely appreciated. So thank you for joining us. Again, if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about these five stories. Uh, if you're listening to us on Apple or Google or any of the awesome podcasting platforms out there, leave us a review. Tell us what you thought of this episode. Follow the show so you can get new episodes on your podcasting feed every week. And until next time, my name is is Larry Freed, and this has been the Shall I Stream It podcast. See you next time.